What's up ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be taking a look at West Virginia's one and only pepperoni rolls. Now the pepperoni roll is little more than some bread dough with some pepperoni in it rolled up and baked in a way so that it absorbs as much of the pepperoni grease as possible. But it does have a very long and very intricate story and connection to the state of West Virginia. Our story begins in North Central West Virginia during the time period of the 1920s, a time period that we have spoke about many a time on this channel. It is during this time period that many individuals, mostly Italian immigrants, were migrating to this part of the state to work in the many coal mines. A popular meal for the miners was a chunk of pepperoni or salami and a chunk of bread because they did not have to worry about either one going bad during the long hours in the mine, although it was still difficult to shovel coal when you had a chunk of bread in one hand and a stick of pepperoni in the other. And if you've never thought about how difficult that would be, well even at this time period it was mostly just a minor issue. A minor issue. It is believed that some of the first pepperoni rolls were baked by coal miners' wives, but one of the first individuals to have commercial success selling pepperoni rolls was one Giuseppe Argiro. Giuseppe, or sometimes just referred to as Joseph, had migrated to the Clarksburg area from Italy and had worked in the mines for several years until he had saved up enough money to move the rest of his family to the Fairmont area and open up a bakery there. Now this bakery is still around to this day. It is the Country Club Bakery of Fairmont. Giuseppe spent the majority of the 20s and 30s baking pepperoni rolls, constantly tweaking the recipe till he found the perfect proportion of bread to pepperoni. He would sell these pepperoni rolls in beer halls, which were often visited by coal miners after working long shifts. Uh, unfortunately, this was also during the time period of West Virginia Prohibition, and I find it hard to believe, in fact, I refuse to believe that West Virginians would stoop as low as to manufacture, distribute, sell, and consume illegal alcohol, but if that is a topic that interests you, I did an entire video on West Virginia during the time period of Prohibition. I'll post it somewhere up here. Soon, the popularity of the pepperoni roll would spread across the state of West Virginia. It was particularly popular in Italian communities, along with industrious coal mining communities, which were found all across the state. In the 1950s, the Colosseseno family got involved in the pepperoni roll game, and it was at this point that other ingredients started being added to the pepperoni roll, including cheese, peppers, and even hot dog sauce. Now, people are very particular about their pepperoni rolls. Even though it is a regional food, uh, predominantly only being found in West Virginia and parts of Pennsylvania and Ohio, this is a food that many people connect to their family story, their family heritage, their coming to America story, along with its involvement in organized labor, the coal wars, and just the West Virginia working class in particular. This makes some people very, very particular about how their pepperoni rolls are prepared and eaten. The main point of contention to pepperoni roll snobs is, does your pepperoni rolls have sticks of pepperoni in them or do they have sliced up pepperoni rounds in them? Some places have gone as far and as radical as implementing a ground up pepperoni jam into their rolls. Generally, cheese and pepperoni rolls is acceptable. Usually it's a mozzarella, provolone, pepper jack, or just a white Italian cheese blend. Also, various meat, tomato, and pepper sauces are very commonly used as condiments to the pepperoni roll. In the 1980s, the pepperoni roll came under attack by the USDA. The USDA wanted to implement a new series of rules uh, that would make sense in places that handled raw meat uh, in order to prevent things like cross-contamination, 
but in the bakeries that prepared pepperoni rolls, these rules really weren't necessary. But if these rules were implemented, in many cases, they would financially ruin these local family-owned businesses. So then West Virginia Senator Jay Rockefeller actually did battle with the USDA and won, keeping these rules from having to be implemented. In 2013, a delegate put forward Concurrent Resolution 84 that would have made the pepperoni roll the official state food of West Virginia. Uh, for as popular as this food is, it has not reached the official status, even though practically every West Virginian just accepts them to be the state food. The delegate would go on to say, whereas Philadelphia has its cheesesteaks and New York its bagels, West Virginia has its pepperoni rolls. In 2017, a book was published entitled The West Virginia Pepperoni Roll. It goes through the history of not just the pepperoni roll, but the families that built their businesses on the pepperoni roll and includes many recipes so that you can make your own West Virginia delicacies. And lastly, in 2012, pepperoni rolls were added to Fallout 76 as part of the Wastelanders expansion. I have no idea why it took Bethesda 18 months to implement a food into their game, but within only two weeks of pepperoni rolls being implemented into the game, players had consumed nearly 200,000 of the West Virginia delicacy. In fact, today, pepperoni rolls can be found in practically every grocery store and gas station across West Virginia, along with practically every single uh, sporting concession stand from high school to collegiate sports. In fact, you can order pepperoni rolls from several bakeries across the state and have them delivered straight to your front door, no matter where you are in the United States. So I hope you learned something today. Um, until next time, don't forget to stay wild and stay wonderful. I have this plate of delicious meaty pastries to go destroy. So until next time, I'll see you later.